welcome back. Um, it's been a little while since I've recorded a video. The last video I uploaded, I think I recorded it in April um, and then I just took ages to put it up on my channel. Um, so I am very, very behind with filming hauls. Um, so I have like May and June. I'm now starting to collect stuff for July. I have multiple videos that I probably should film, but instead I'm gonna try and condense them because um, it's gonna take a lot of time. I apologize, everything's just become a bit of a mess. It's overwhelming. How many books haven't been put away and the lack of space of where to put them. I have been unhauling quite a lot as well, just um, to make room, but it's still very, very, uh, very much a mess right now. And I know I've mentioned it a few times, but I will be filming a reorganization video because it has to be done. The reorganization has to be done. Um, but today I have the sci-fi haul that me and DB Otaku bought on my birthday in April. Um, I have that haul for you today. So we bought all of the books that I'm going to show you today on his live stream that he does on a Monday. And I think if you go on his channel, you can still watch that video if you're interested in watching, um, watching us buy. Um, I'll put a link down below so you can find that. Um, we had a lot of input from the chat for some of the things we picked up. So um, some of the stuff is new to me that I didn't even know about. Some of it are things that I really, really wanted to get. Some of the stuff is like his stuff that maybe I'll try, maybe not. But I just thought I'll include it all in the haul and show you everything we picked up. So it's about 40... There's about 40 volumes, maybe a few more. Um, so yes, I will start with the manhwa because there's only a few volumes of manhwa and then the rest is manga. Okay, so first up, I picked up two more volumes of Villains Are Destined to Die. I got volume three and volume four. I read this uh, first um, literally like two minutes after I'd finished reading the first volume of The Remarried Empress. So honestly, I preferred that to this. And next time I read them both, I'll make sure not to read them side by side because I felt like I was comparing them. They are very different, but I just felt like I was comparing them and I just preferred The Remarried Empress. This has so much love that I really want to give it a good, like a good shot. So I have read the first two volumes and wanted to pick up some more. Um, the artwork's really nice. Obviously it's a manhwa, so it's in full color. It's a lot of pink. I mean, she has pink hair, so that's obviously a contributing factor. Um, it is very pretty. And I mean, I think you can see from the color, the, you can see from the covers that it's, it's really nice artwork. Um, this one is about a girl who, I'm terrible at this, I don't know, did she die? Did she just wake up in a game? I can't remember. I think she might have died. Um, woke up in the game that she'd been playing. She played the game as the villain in hard mode. Um, so she actually knows the, char the character she's going to meet. And I think this is where she has been isekai to. It's set before the actual game starts. So she's trying to predict what's going to happen prevent her death um and like befriend the male characters because they hate her in the game and they are the ones who who kill her so it's a really interesting premise and i do i do like it so i'm looking forward to reading these volumes and seeing how much uh how much more development we get I'm not sure how long this series is, but I feel like there's probably six or seven volumes out now. So I am behind on picking these up. And next manhwa is The Remarried Empress, and this is volume six. I am not up to date with this either, but again, I just really like this one. I feel like there's the Empress character is, she's so lovely. And there are a few other characters that I just, I could punch, honestly. I, they're so awful or annoying, but I just can't stop reading. Like, I just love the drama in it. And again, it's a really beautiful 
uh, beautifully drawn series, all in full colour. Um, this one is not an isekai, it is just like a um, historical series. Um, there is like an element of magic and a lot of deception. It's really, really good. Okay, moving on now to all of the manga. I think I've tried to organise this into sort of categories, but um, um, maybe not. I don't know. Okay, first up we have Call the Name of the Night, Volume 2. This one was recommended by Sazzle in the chat. Um, and I had already ordered Volume 1 secondhand, and I can't remember if I've already hauled that one. So, um, yeah, Volume 2. This one, the it does look really beautiful. I can't really say anything about the story because I haven't started reading it and I don't really know anything about it. But it does look really nice. The artwork is very, uh, very cute. Almost like a cuter witch hat sort of vibe I got there when I had a little flick through. Not as, um, it's detailed, but maybe not as detailed, but it looks really nice. And again, this has been highly recommended. So thank you. I'm looking forward to reading that one. Uh, next up, these were recommended, but also I really wanted them. And I have actually read these. Um, and that is Ogami-san, Can't Keep It In. I'm not sure if this is a shonen or a seinen um, series, but it is like, maybe it's like a shonen romance um, comedy. It is, um, I found it really funny. Um, I read volume one and two just the other day and it is about a girl who has very um, inappropriate thoughts, basically all the time. She is very innocent and she just is curious about things. In some respects, that side of it, the story reminded me a little bit of um, avant-garde Yumiko, but that's kind of where it stops because she doesn't go quite as, um, extreme as that series but um the guy who she kind of starts to like or take an interest in um whenever anybody touches him it makes that person say what they're thinking so that is why Ogami-san can't keep it in because every time she touches him she says something that she's thinking and it's usually quite inappropriate he is very very good he's very mature and he's just like okay um but it made me laugh so, so hard. And I'm really, really excited to read some more of this. It is a relatively new series. And I think there's about five, maybe six volumes of this out. Um, I assume it's still ongoing. So that one was, um, I was excited to pick it up and I'm glad I did because I really liked it. Okay, next, I haven't read this one yet. And there is a second volume out and that is Tales of the Tendo Family. The cover for this is so beautiful. I love all of the, the, like the fabric prints um it's a historical shoujo i don't know if there is any um supernatural elements in this or not but it is set i think in like the 1920s 1930s i think it's based on the fact that some of them are wearing like historical traditional dress and some of them are wearing like suits um i feel like that's the time period it's set um it's a shoujo, but I get the impression from what I've heard from various different reviews, it's quite dark um, and it's not particularly like sweet or happy. Um, this girl has had a very unusual upbringing and basically has nobody and she takes the place of another girl who was promised to be this guy's fiance, um, but she gets found out. That's basically all I know about it. Uh, but he apparently is awful and yeah i mean it sounds like a car crash i really really can't wait to read it but also just want to appreciate how beautiful it looks this one's one piece books don't have that many series from one piece books um they're like a slightly unusual size which does annoy me when i'm trying to put them on my shelf but it's not a reason to stop me from picking them up so i've heard a lot of people have either like really liked that or really not liked it and a few people have dropped it I think because initially a few people said like, oh, it reminds me of My Happy Marriage. It's got that vibe. I think it's literally only the time period that it's set in that has that same vibe because My Happy Marriage is just absolutely beautiful and they're very sweet and it's almost wholesome there. Like their relationship's wholesome, even though some of the other characters in that story are 
really, really awful. Um, whereas, I don't know if there's any nice wholesome characters in that story. We'll find out. Next up, I pre-ordered, but it all came, it all came about the same time, uh, volume 41 of Yona of the Dawn. I, I haven't read volume 40 yet. I binge read, as many of you know, I binge read 1, 2, 39 in the space of a couple of weeks last year and I was absolutely obsessed, loved it so much. I don't think I can just do one volume at a time, so I was going to wait for a few. Also, I feel like I've heard that this volume and the next few volumes, it all kind of covers one arc and there's a lot going on. I, I don't like the idea of having to wait three months or something or four months in between each release. So I'm just going to collect these for a little while. I am planning on rereading the entire series again as well. So um, maybe when the next volume comes out, I'll do like a full binge one to 42 um, and then cry until the next volume comes out. But yes, big you on a fan, can't recommend enough. And uh, next up I got, this was a recommendation from someone else, I can't remember. Um, the Villainess's Guide to Not Falling in Love. I have read this one as well. It's quite a chunky uh, volume. Annoyingly, it's got like a flick on the cover and I've had it stacked under all of these books trying to straighten it out, but it hasn't worked. This one was very uh, pretty and I did quite like the story. Honestly, it's been a few months since I read it. I can't remember all of the details. One thing that I wasn't too sure about was the focus on magic kind of became quite overwhelming at one point when I was like, and I, was, I wasn't expecting it, but it, it wasn't terrible and I probably would read the next one. Um, and it was, like I said, it was, it was really nicely drawn and things. The story was good. It was just, I think towards like halfway through, towards the end, it, it, the magic element of things became a lot more like the main focus on the story and I just wasn't it's just not what I was expecting I was expecting it to be more of a romance even though it says guide to not falling in love we all know that that's not going to be the case okay this next one I had to ask the chat for the name because I couldn't remember what it was called but I'd heard um I'd heard Liddy talking about this series and she made it sound really really good so I decided I wanted to pick it up and that is, Though I Am an Inept Villainess, Tale of the Butterfly Rat Body Swap in the Maiden Court. So yeah, that's why I couldn't remember the name of the title. This one, I'm not sure how I feel about Villainess series, like to be honest, even though I've just talked about like two other series that have Villainess in the title. But this one did sound really, really interesting because I like the idea of the body swap and it is somebody who is outside of the court is jealous of the princess or the yeah she is the crown prince's favored favored maiden and um, she's jealous of her so she does something and swaps into her body and the maiden is then put into her body and the maiden may have this like beautiful life but apparently she's like really sickly and ill she can't really do much and she's quite sad so she then gets put into this like healthy body and can can do things that she's never done before so I thought that sounded really interesting and I wanted to try it also I didn't realize it was like so beautiful because I think I've just listened to the video I hadn't seen any um, images of it so I do like the look the style of this again it's obviously like kind of historical setting um, and I'm just I really am enjoying anything historical okay this one i can't believe i haven't read yet but it was at the bottom of the pile and the pile was very very tall and this has been stacked up on the floor for weeks um i'm i'm like semi excited to read it um and that is marmalade boy volume five because it is the last volume in this series um i've really loved these reprints i think they're like been so nicely done they have the like really nice colored pages on the manga paper for every single chapter they've included like extra images from magazines and things look at that i mean it's no spoilers obviously um the story itself is very typical of a like 90s shoujo full of chaos and i shouldn't be flicking through that um full of chaos is like jumps around quite a lot but i feel like it is quite uh linear and consistent some other older series that I've been reading recently, I've really struggled to like understand what's going on, but I do really um, feel like this one's easy to follow. It's, you have to take it like 
with a pinch of salt. It is pretty stupid. Parts of it are so stupid. But that's sort of what's charming about it. And yeah, it's generally described as problematic. I don't like hearing that word because I just, it can mean so many things. But um, I will get to this and finish this series off. And I am very pleased I picked this one up. Okay, next up, I was really, really, really looking forward to picking this up. I've looked for this in stores and it is just not in stores. Um, and the third volume just came out, well, obviously a few months ago when we picked this up. Um, and that is We Can't Do Just Plain Love. So this is a older, mature smut series um, between two work colleagues. And are these appropriate to show? This one's slightly more risk. And volume three. So I actually have only read volume one so far, but it was really good. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I had listened to other people describe what it was about. Um, so basically this guy, he struggles to talk to women because he gets um, excited and this woman is i can't remember her deal actually but anyway they make an arrangement to basically get together and um she's gonna help him overcome in his excitement so he can be around women and um but obviously you can see there's gonna like you're hoping there's gonna be like a romance blossom in between them I wasn't expecting it to be so beautifully drawn. Like, you know, we look through volumes and like, oh, the art's really nice. This was so detailed and like, it was just, it suited the style of the story and everything really, really well. I was trying to find something that's not inappropriate to share, but quite a lot of it is inappropriate. I guess you're just gonna have to look online. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see, just even from the cover, this style of, it, of the um, of this guy, like the detail, he, it was just so nice. Like I can't like praise that enough and very, very much excited to read the next two volumes. Um, so I was really pleased I could find those because yeah, like I said, I looked in like Forbidden Planet Traveling Man and they just never had them. Tokyo Pops are harder to find in store generally um, or it's mostly just BL. So yes, glad I found those and I've managed to read one of them. Okay, next up, this one is another one influenced by Liddy. And I've read all three of these. And the fourth one is also ordered. And that is She Loves to Cook, She Loves to Eat. So I've got volume one, volume, volume two, and volume three. This one is very, very wholesome and sweet. I flew through these really quickly. They um, are a really sweet pair. Uh, this lady really loves cooking, but she wants to make like more extravagant food or just different food in bulk, but she can't eat it all by herself. She just lives on her own and her neighbor can eat like so, so much. Um, so she, one day it like knocks and says, you know, I've made extra food, would you like some? And the friendship forms and it is very, very, uh, it is very wholesome and lovely. Watching them, like watching her cook is really interesting. What I also liked is at the back of every single volume, it goes into detail um, about specific ingredients and types of food. And it like shows you like an image and a description about it and that's, there's like five pages of that at the end of every single volume, which I just, I like the little additions like that. So the way volume three ended um, has left me, uh, I, I really, really need to read volume four. And I don't know if this is still ongoing, I think it is. And I will be continuing to pick this one up. Okay, next up I think is a lot of BL. Um, some of them were recommended, some of them I wanted to pick up anyway. So the first one I'm gonna share is Our Dining Table, which is just a one shot. Although I think I was told there is like a spin-off. I think it's just in Japanese. I don't think it's been released in English. I hope it will be because 
this had me so emotional i mean similar kind of idea like it's sort of centered around food like she loves to cook she loves to eat but um this pair so um this guy and his little brother um they lost their mom they live at home with their dad and they meet this other guy who um offers to cook food for them and it kind of becomes like a weekly thing they are so sweet it's so wholesome he has a lovely relationship with his little brother like um and their relationship it's not necessarily obvious that there's any kind of feeling initially but as it goes on their their feelings obviously grow and honestly i was i was like close to tears reading this it was so beautiful i really wish i'd read it sooner it is not explicit or anything in any way it's very wholesome it is rated teen so i would i would highly recommend this to anyone who's like looking to try bl but nothing necessarily heavy um it was just a really really good series and i hope we do get whatever is being put out in japan i hope we get it printed in english as well okay the next two were both recommended by the same person and honestly i was super questionable about this first one but i i didn't want to kind of um I don't want to say no because I think it's important to try lots of different things even when you're not sure and I ended up loving it and that is A Hero in the Demon's Castle. So this one, the art style is very very different to typical manga. I would I would describe it as like more American comic book style. The story itself, so it's published by Kuma so it actually has like a a slip cover and that also has like little extra details on on the on the book and the, underneath which i really liked um yeah the style itself is is very unique and i'll just make sure there's nothing super inappropriate before i share a page yeah i actually loved this story it is about a demon who is constantly being attacked um by the heroes and one guy who is supposed supposed to be the hero comes to the castle and just asks if he can stay there because he doesn't want to do that he doesn't want to be a hero um he is like the most intellectually challenged person i think i've ever seen in a, in a series but he's so lovable and the demon really like softens and um like to him and starts to care about him it was it's just a one shot it was not at all what i was expecting but i really enjoyed it i laughed a lot it was funny and parts of it were like kind of bizarre but it was definitely worth reading in my opinion so i'm so grateful for the recommendation for that one and the next series is another one published by kuma completely different vibe and that is a home far away this one is immature read um and it was extremely sad it was so sad thinking about it i could probably cry the art was so beautiful so detailed and i want to try and find a page that's like appropriate to share there was a lot of religious elements to this story which it didn't put me off but if you're not interested in I mean I'm not particularly religious I'm not religious myself so it wasn't off-putting because of that it was shocking some of the things like it was very very believable and yeah I maybe I would say it is quite triggering maybe for some people it was beautiful and I'm very glad I read it very glad I picked it up um, but definitely not happy or lighthearted in any way at all. Is it, I, I never know if I can say I enjoyed reading something like that because it made me really sad, but I didn't like stop. I wanted to read it, but is it enjoyable? I don't know what the right word is for those kind of reads. Anyway, uh, next up we have uh, The Other World's Books Depend on the Bean Counter, Volume 4. Please don't hate on me, I haven't read this one yet either. Um, 
I think I'll probably do a reread of uh, this series from volume one because I read the other volumes. I feel like it was over a year ago and I've kind of forgotten parts of the story. So I will get to this one, but I know it's a very, very much loved series in the community. And some more BL. I got Undead, Finding Love in the Zombie Apocalypse, volumes one and two. I can't remember who shared this online. I think there was a few people who shared about it and I trusted their judgment and I just thought it sounded interesting. I like kind of supernatural things and um, I mean, it's different, but I really like Fangs. Obviously that's got a supernatural element and it is BL. So I just wanted to try this one too. And a few more from this stack. Um, we have Pink Heart Jam volume two. Really, really enjoyed volume one. Um, don't want to go into it too much because I, I'm planning on reading this soon, but I, I really want to know what happens between the main two characters. Um, I can't remember if I heard this one has a spin-off series as well or not. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I would definitely be interested to pick that one up too. And lastly, I have Seaside Stranger Volume 1. Um, this one I've looked at so many times and it just, the, the art and the cover, it just looks so beautiful. BL, it is rated older teen, so I'm guessing it's not like mature, mature. Um, I will hopefully get to this one soon as well. And the last one that was definitely a recommendation from the chat because I wasn't sure I would want to pick this up, but it got added to the basket and I will read it. And that is, I got reincarnated into a BL world of big man boobs. It's volume one, so I'm guessing it's an ongoing series, but it's quite a big volume, so it must be a two and one. Yeah, volume one and two. Um, I don't know anything about it. The title sounds very self-explanatory, so I will find out uh, when I get around to it. Okay, last stack. Quite a lot of this is stuff for my partner, but I will be reading and have actually read some of them anyway. Okay, so number one, um, this one was recommended by Manga Cat, and I know she loves this series and there's about 19 or 20 volumes of it, so I'm very behind, but I picked up Inspector Volume 1, which I understand is like a supernatural mystery series, and that is all I know, so we'll get to this one. Uh, next up, the last volume I was needing for Bleach, and it is the last volume of Bleach, which is Volume 74. I've been collecting this series since I was 15. So <laughs> for 17 years and I've just picked up the last volume. Sweet. Um, this from my, from my memory, it's quite a quick read, especially like the first half. I feel like I just, you could just fly through it. So this will be on the reread probably for next year um, because I've put too many things on my TV off for this year and I haven't done very well so far but I really loved this series as a teen and I know my partner wants to read this as well. So um, I'm happy to have this completed now. Uh, next up was another recommendation from the chat and that is The Witch and the Beast Volume 2. I have Volume 1 and Volume 5, I think I got like cheap. So I haven't read past Volume 1 because I couldn't find for a while, a lot of these volumes just weren't in stores or online. Um, the artwork's really quite unique in this series as well, and it is very dark. It's not um, in any way sweet or fluffy. I can't find anything that's not really graphic. Graphic in like a creepy, violent sort of way. It's 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 really good. Um, I'll be interested to pick this one back up and um, keep reading. Next up, we have uh, Sensei's Pious Lie, Volume 1. So I think this is four volume, like four omnibuses long. Um, this is rated 18. I know for a fact that this one is very triggering and um, has some very sensitive topics brought up. I don't think I was particularly keen to pick this one up until somebody said it had very Oshimi-esque vibes. And I was like, get it in the basket because I've been obsessively reading anything Shuzo Oshimi. And if this has got a similar kind of vibe, I want to see if I like it as well. So that's why we just picked up the one. These are not cheap. Um, I think like full price, they're like 20 pounds. 
which is which is a lot so um yeah it was obviously discounted on sci-fi then next we got the first two volumes of pluto which i know absolutely nothing about but um obviously these were not picked up for me is it something i would read i would maybe try a volume but i really don't know if it's my kind of thing i think it's only about eight or nine volumes long that series next up we have volumes four to ten of happiness this is a Shuzo Oshimi series and I have read all of these volumes. This was the most different of all of his series that I've read so far because this one comes under, in my opinion specifically, I would definitely class this as a horror. I've never read any horror manga. I am not into horror at all. It's obviously supernatural. It is about vampires and it is very graphic the characters are typical of his stories and they are some of them are absolutely awful i couldn't stop reading again this is one of those where i'm like would i use the word enjoy when i talk about reading this series did i enjoy reading it i couldn't stop reading it and i would i would read it again it was very unsettling is a word I could think to describe it and it was extremely unsettling and I would read it again so yes I did enjoy it would not recommend if you have are, are not particularly interested in horror I just yeah it's a tough one like it was very very much out of my comfort zone I don't know if I want to try any other horror manga like I'm just still not sure it's for me but that might just be the exception anyway <laughs> last few volumes we picked up uh one dance volume four a series my partner has been reading and really likes uh Ragnar Crimson volume eight I know sorry nothing about and also picked up the last volume of the girl from the other side the hardback deluxe editions these are stunning really really nice and lastly very much persuaded by the chat but i knew he wanted to get a series and the debate of hardback or paperback went on for such a long time but we ended up getting two volumes of the deluxe editions of berserk so we got volume one i mean i can show you them both they look exactly the same <laughs> and volume two i don't know if this is a series i'll ever want to read but i guess we have it now so i have the option to try it i think these are three in ones i think um, and I know there's about 14 of these out. They are very, very expensive, but they were discounted on Sci-Fi and obviously we used my discount code as well. So it made it a little bit more worthwhile, but um, we were trying to weigh up if the paperbacks, the singles are like better value than the hardbacks. Obviously the hardbacks take up less space, but they're harder to read, like more uncomfortable to hold. It was a whole big debate you can watch the video if you want um personally i think these look really nice and i'm i'm all for anything to save in space so there we go so that is it from the sci-fi birthday manga buying stream uh video um i am really really happy with pretty much everything we picked up and I have liked I think everything that I've read so far if you want to have a look on sci-fi don't forget you can use code Dragon Ball Zoe for 5% off your order and there is a referral link down below as well if you want to use that anyway that's it for today thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye